So, dear brothers, uh, last time we studied about the most holy faith. So, uh, we have seen how uh, the discipline has to be maintained in the church as per the Bible. How whatever the apostles uh, have bound in a disciplined uh, manner, it is like God uh, binding uh, and uh, dictating those terms uh, as discipline in the church. So, dear brethren, uh, so we have seen uh, various liberties also that is granted uh, in the church. And we also studied how Satan uh, infiltrated the false doctrines to the church and uh, tried to corrupt the church. You see? So today, we are going to study the tabernacle arrangement. You see, while studying the Old Testament, uh, we would have studied uh, the tabernacle arrangement. You see, how the temple of God... You see, in the wilderness was built. You see, how it had a court. A prison altar was there. You see, upon which the sacrifices were made. And how the labor was there after the sacrifices, the priest and the high priest used to wash themselves. And we also, you see, have read how there is a holy and a most holy place. And all these things... You see how the rituals were made, the sacrifices were done, the incense were offered, you see the blood was sprinkled. So, dear brethren, uh, sometimes we wonder what is the meaning of all these things. Huh? Some meaning we would have understood generally like that. But today, we are going to see in detail, you see, about this uh, tabernacle, the outline about uh, God's uh, divine plan. When God, uh, you see, told to Moses to build this tabernacle, he told uh, Moses to build exactly, you see, as uh, God had showed him uh, without any mistake. Uh, and any small, even minute, uh, you see, changes or mistake, uh, the penalty would be death. Because uh, God was so strict uh, regarding the building of the tabernacle, because it resembled uh, the things uh, in uh, heaven, dear brethren. Therefore, uh, the penalty was death. So before going uh, to the study of uh, how the construction offerings were made, first of all, we need to study why God ever gave this tabernacle arrangement. Sir. Because this tabernacle arrangement so was something similar to, to what today they have uh, in the other religions. Uh, you see the temple. We had offered sacrifices and all these things and all. So, why God ever gave this tabernacle arrangement? Because God had given the law through Moses. And the law was so powerful that uh, if any man kept the law without even breaking at least one of the commandments, if he kept all the law, he could live forever. He could attain eternal life the law had so much of power in it. Let us read Galatians 3.12. Uh, Abhishek brother, can you read Galatians 3.12? Okay. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. The man that doeth uh, them shall live in them. You see, the law. If man that doeth the law, he shall live, he shall not die. So, so much of power the law had in it. But unfortunately, none of the Israel people could keep the perfect law because it was made for perfect man. And all these people were sinners. You see, they were all fallen in sin. How much ever they tried to attempt to keep the law, they could not keep it because they were already fallen into sin. Romans 8.3, that's what it says. You see, because of the weakness of the flesh, law could not succeed. Hence, if law was a failure, then what is the use of giving the law? Hence, God made an arrangement where the people of Israel could continuously try to keep the law year after year, year after year, and thus come to God. You see, hence, this tabernacle arrangement was made. Where the people of Israel could come to God and offer sacrifices for the sin and get reconciled to God. And these sacrifices were offered in advance. For the coming year, 
whatever sins uh, they were uh, she supposed to do all the sins uh, were paid in advance uh, you see so that the entire coming year they may keep the law that is the reason god gave this tabernacle arrangement okay now coming to the construction of this tabernacle how it was constructed what material were used what is the length what is the breadth what is the size all the details is given to us in exodus 25th chapter to exodus 27th chapter you see dear brethren the entire construction is there so after the class uh, i request you to please go through the you see uh, the bible so that you can understand uh, what clearly we tell and uh, the sacrifices the performance uh, how the sacrifice was given you see what type of uh, sacrifice was given in what way it was given how uh, things has to be done uh, all those things uh, is given to us in exodus 35 chapter to verse 40 chapter 40 performance so this is uh, the you see the basic uh, tabernacle outline it had a court which was 150 feet in length and 75 feet in breadth and that was called as a court inside the court you see there was a tabernacle proper you see and that was made of uh, you see, in the length of it was 45 feet and the breadth was 15 feet and the height uh, was 15 feet. This was called as a tabernacle proper. This tabernacle proper was again divided into two compartments. Uh, one uh, holy, another uh, the most holy. The most holy was uh, exactly 15 feet height, 15 feet length and 15 feet breadth. So it was a perfect cuboid. You see, and the holy place was 15 feet height, 15 feet breadth, and it was 30 feet uh, in length. And this entire tabernacle structure, all the materials uh, was composed of uh, one wood that, uh, that is called as acacia wood or sitim wood. We would have read in the Bible, you see, why did God particularly choose this wood? Because... This word had aromatic, uh, you see, uh, 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 see sense uh, in it, and uh, it was not uh, so easily, you see, corrupted or uh, infected with uh, insects, uh, and uh, it was a very durable wood. Uh, hence, uh, God told uh, the people of Israel to use this particular wood, uh, and uh, the pillars were made uh, like this, uh, and uh, it was plated. Uh, with gold. It was not completely made with gold, but uh, it was completely covered, you see, with the golden plates. Uh, why, why did God make uh, the people of Israel only to cover with golden plates? God could have made it with solid gold. No, when the people of Israel came out of Egypt, they brought all the wealth. They could have used solid gold. Yes, surely. But uh, the specific gravity of gold when compared to all the metals is very, very high. What do you mean by that one? The specific gravity. Dear brethren, if you, you say weigh uh, a, a 10 gram of gold on one side and place a 10 gram iron on the other side, you see, the specific gravity, the gravitation pull of gold is much higher than compared to all the other metals. Therefore, you see, we all know very well that the Israel's tabernacle was a temporary construction which God had gave them in the wilderness. Whenever they had to travel, they have to dismantle this entire tabernacle and take it to other place. And it was supposed to be taken particularly the way God had told them on a bullock cart. Imagine if the entire uh, pillars uh, were made of solid gold, such uh, height, uh, length, breadth and all, it would be very difficult. Uh, it would get stuck in the sand and uh, such a holy things were not supposed to be, uh, you see, fall on the ground. So hence God, uh, instead of uh, uh, making it of pure gold, told to make it of acacia wood and cover it with gold plates. 
and these pillars were placed next to each other you see and uh, they were joined together and uh, they were placed inside you see chapters that is called as uh, silver chapters in the bible so these each and every pillar had a you see uh, she had a groove and this was plucked you see uh, plugged inside the chapters the silver chapters that was actually buried in the ground you see as we can see here the chapters were initially buried in the ground and each and every chapters had a socket inside which these pillars are exactly you see placed and locked so that it may not move so once the, all the pillars were placed you see the golden rods were pierced into it so that even uh, come wind or rain or anything see nothing should happen to the tabernacle you can see even in the video also you see this is how actually the tabernacle was constructed it was placed in uh, silver chapters uh, and each and every pillars were interlocked uh, you see with uh, golden rods uh, you see into the grooves uh, so that, uh, it may not uh, shake uh, and in between also the rods uh, were pierced uh, so it is give the strength for the entire uh, structure so dear brethren so this uh, tabernacle proper as we I, we told you it was divided into two parts uh, the holy and the most holy in between the most holy and uh, and the holy and you between the holy and the court there was few pillars that was uh, placed uh, upon which uh, the veil was placed veil veil was made of what type of material if you see it was made of a linen cloth designed uh, by the cherubs uh, you see picture with only three particular uh, color uh, thread that is blue scarlet and purple using these threads uh, you see the cherub uh, was designed uh, on uh, uh, this white linen cloth this is how the veil was supposed to be look uh, you see and it was placed uh, at the first veil and the uh, second uh, veil you see and the entire tabernacle proper was covered with actually four uh, types of materials uh, you see the one uh, as we told you was like the veil made of the same material you see and uh, the second one was a uh, you see uh, a goat's uh, hair you see and the third one was a goat's hair dyed red you see and uh, on the top of it uh, you see the badger skin okay so these were the four layers that were used you see and the second layer was actually the ram's uh, skin you see so this was how it was completely a uh, covered uh, you see the tabernacle proper was covered and the coat you see the coat was completely covered with a white linen cloth which was almost 7 feet in height you see dear brother it was almost uh, 7 feet uh, in height it was completely covered and uh, this one again you see that uh, uh, coat uh, which uh, had pillars uh, all around was made up of acacia wood but here it was placed in copper chapters you see uh, and uh, copper uh, sockets you see and uh, again each and every pillar was bound you see and locked to the ground by using silver metal strings you see silver silver uh, strings were used and silver nails were used to root it to the ground and uh, this tabernacle had only one gate again the gate was of the same uh, uh, material that was uh, made out of a uh, first veil and second veil that is uh, it was made of a white linen cloth again the cherubs were designed upon it and very much far from this uh, tabernacle was uh, israel's camp none of the israel people were allowed to come so near to it uh, their camp was very quite outside so as soon as somebody enters uh, this uh, uh, tabernacle the first thing that came before their eyes was the brazen altar the brazen altar was uh, four and a half feet height seven and a half feet uh, width 
it was so used that it is to attract the attention of the person who came inside the tabernacle and upon this uh, brazen altar itself uh, the priest used to sacrifice uh, you see the bullocks the goats uh, uh, to offer uh, sin offerings to god and as we move a little bit further beyond this uh, altar we see that there was a lever you see and uh, this lever there was water inside it and there was a small jug that used to be uh, with it for a support to you see uh, take the water out from the lever so this lever uh, the priest after offering the sacrifices used it uh, you see to cleanse his uh, hands dear uh. brethren and as uh, we come a little bit further we have the first chamber that is called as the holy and as we get inside the holy there are three things that are seen in the holy first uh, you see is the table of the shoe bread where six and six loaves are placed upon uh, this table you see and upon uh, the six and six loaves uh, of uh, bread a, a fist full of uh, incense was placed uh, upon uh, this bread uh, on the top of the bread and this bread was replaced every sabbath day you see and priest uh, was supposed to eat this uh, holy bread uh, every uh, week so this is uh, how the table of the shoe bread was made again here yeah, the table of shoe bread was made of acacia wood and gold plated dead opposite to this exactly opposite to this was the golden candlestick the golden candlestick was again made of pure gold we saw all the other materials were made of uh, you see uh, brass uh, and uh, it was uh, it was made of wood and covered with brass or gold but here the golden candlestick was made out of uh, pure gold uh, you see and uh, the high priest used to come and uh, trim the uh, you see lamp every morning and evening and uh, his duty was to keep the lamp burning 24 hours uh, and uh, he had to remove all you see uh, the twigs the dirts uh, you see after the burning they're supposed to come and clean it uh, morning and evening and uh, fill it fresh with oil so it may burn brightly and uh, between these two a uh, very close to the second veil was a golden incense altar upon this altar you see the priest is to offer incense uh, which passed uh, beyond the second veil and uh, entered into the most holy and that was a pleasing sacrifice to god so okay so if you go in behind this uh, holy we come to the most holy the only one thing that is made uh, as a scene in the uh, most holy is that uh, it had only one item the ark of the covenant you see the ark of the covenant was made up of two you see uh, things uh, one uh, on the top of the ark of the covenant was the mercy seat the mercy seat uh, was there and uh, below the ark of the covenant was there here again the ark of the covenant was made of uh, wood and covered with gold inside this uh, there were three things that were placed uh, the ten commandments the moses uh, uh, which you received from god and uh, the manna where uh, people of israel used to eat every day it was placed in a golden pot uh, and uh, aaron's budded rod which is to never dry and the manna that kept in the golden pot is to never rot so these things were placed inside uh, you see the ark of the covenant so let us read uh, hebrews 9 chapter 4 to 5 it is given to us in hebrews 9 chapter 4 to 5 uh, stephen brother can you read hebrews 9 chapter 4 to 5 One minute, brother. Hebrews nine, four and five. Yes.
behind the second curtain was a room called the Most Holy Place, containing the golden altar of incense and the gold-covered Ark of the Covenant. Inside the Ark were the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Above the ark were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. But we cannot dis discuss these things in detail now. Okay, thank you, brother. So, upon this one was uh, the mercy seat. The mercy seat was made of pure gold, a single piece pure gold. It had two cherubs, you see, that were actually seeing each other, facing each other, and uh, seeing uh, the mercy seat where the Shekinah glory is to shine, as if ready to fly. Dear brethren, so this mercy seat was the only thing uh, that was made of pure gold in the most holy. And the high priest, once a year, used to come and sprinkle the blood, you see, as an atonement for the entire people of Israel. You see, upon this mercy seat. And uh, there used to be a Shekinah glory that was uh, shining uh, on this mercy seat. Okay. Now, you see, what is the meaning of all these things? Uh? Dear brethren, we know that uh, what all written in the Old Testament, the law, you see, the tabernacle arrangement, you see, everything, it was a shadow of the things uh, in heaven. Let us read Hebrews 8 chapter verse 1 to 5. Sahiji Budar, can you read Hebrews 8 chapter 1 to 5? Yes, sir. Now, the main point of what we are saying is we do have such a high priest who sat down at the right of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, and so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already priests who offer the gifts prepared by the Lord. They serve at a scientific that, that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Mm. So, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. So all these things are a shadow of heavenly things, you see. And uh, the real image is of Christ. Colossians 2.17. Uh, Binod brother, can you read Colossians 2.17? Okay, sir. Colossians 2.17. Hmm. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body of Christ. Okay. Amen. The body is of Christ. Read also Hebrews 10.1, brother. Hebrews 10.1. Okay, sir. Uh, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very means of the thing can never with those sacrifice which they offer year by year continually make the co uh, commerce thereunto perfect. See, Amen. for the law having a shadow of good things to come, it was just a shadow of the real uh, things to come. So, in the New Testament, uh, Everything uh, had a meaning. So what is the meaning of this uh, tabernacle? First of all, if you see the metals used in the tabernacle were only almost two items uh, in the tabernacle proper. You see, one was gold, other was pro copper. Now, what is the meaning of this one? You see, gold uh, actually is the one of the, you see, purest of all the metals. Uh, you see, it can be said it is very costly metal. Compared to all the metals. Uh, so what does this represent? This represents the divine nature which God himself is having. Uh, and the other metal that was used uh, in the tabernacle was copper or brass. Copper or brass 
looks exactly like gold, but it's not gold. Like, for example, people wear gold wrist watches. It's not gold. It is made up of copper or brass, but it much resembles uh, the original gold. Uh, that represents the human nature. Therefore, we read in the Bible how man was created, how human being was created. He was created in the image of God. Copper or brass is in the image of gold. Similarly, man was created in the image of God. And uh, the two metals here signify is uh, the heavenly salvation and the earthly salvation. You see, we have studied from beginning God has a plan. In the plan, there are two salvations. Uh, isn't it? We studied in the subject of gospel. Two salvations are there. One is the earthly salvation, one is the heavenly salvation. Those who believe in Jesus now can attain the heavenly salvation. But what of the general world? who never accepted Jesus as a savior. They also will be saved, but only for the earthly salvation. That is what these two uh, see, metals in the tabernacle signify. And the camp was quite far from this tabernacle. So what does that signify? If you see, that represents the world. The world were very far from God. They are never near to God at all. They then, uh, that is the world. But if they have to come to God, if they have to go inside the tabernacle and have fellowship with God, the one thing they have to do is that they have to go across beyond this coat. This coat had white linen cloth. You see? So you need to go beyond that white linen cloth, that wall of, you see, the coat. Then only can you come and have fellowship with God? Now, what does the white linen cloth in the Bible mean? White linen cloth in the Bible means righteousness of the saints. Justification. The righteousness which we attain by accepting Jesus as our personal savior. Read Revelation 19.8. Abhishek Buddhar, can you read Revelation 19.8? Yes, I will read and to her was granted that she could be arrayed with fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. See, the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, dear brethren. So, the linen cloth is the righteousness which we receive after believing in Jesus, the justification, the wall of faith has to be crossed to come inside and have fellowship with God. Hence, the whole world is very far from God. You see, and to come inside the, this tabernacle, how many gate was there? There was only one gate. Now, who is that gate? There is only one God and one, and one mediator between God and man. That is Christ Jesus. Jesus is the only mediator. Without Jesus or except Jesus, no man can approach it to God. Read Acts 4.12. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read Acts 4.12? Acts 4.12. Hmm. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Hmm. There is no other name given for man to be saved. There is no other name than the name of Jesus Christ. You see, and Jesus is the only gate. But read John 10, 9 also. In John 10, 9. I am the gate whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. See, I am the gate. Jesus is the only gate. There is no other gate than Jesus. So, once if we come through Jesus, there are three places. You see, first is the court. Second is the holy. Third is the most holy. Now, what does Jesus say? I am the way, the truth and life. So, Jesus is the way to God. Jesus is the truth to God. Jesus is the life who gives the same life which God himself is having. So John 46, we know all this was very clearly. So dear brethren, 
as soon as we come inside the core, the first thing which we see before our eyes is a big brazen altar. You see, upon this one, the sacrifices were made. It was made up of uh, brass, again made up of wood and covered with brass. You see, the brass always represents the perfect uh, human nature. Here, the sacrifices were made that represents uh, Jesus uh, came to this earth as a perfect human being and offered himself as a sacrifice to God. John the Baptist, uh, seeing Jesus, he said, no, Behold the Lamb of God, uh, which taketh away the sins of the whole world. Read John 1.29. Binod brother, can you read John 1.29? Okay, sir. John 1.29. The next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taken, take away the sin of the world. See? Okay. Behold Amen. the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. So, Jesus took not only our sins, but took the sins of the entire world. He did not die only for Christians, dear brother. When he died, there was no Christians at all. He died for the entire world. First Timothy 4.10. Raj brother, can you read First Timothy 4.10? Is it possible? Uh, brother, sorry brother. I just forget to my class to bring in Bangalore. It is in Bangalore only. Okay. So uh, Sahiji Budar, can you read First Timothy 4.10? Yes, brother. And that is why we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God who is the saver of all people and especially of those who believe. He is the saver of all people, especially especially of those who believe. So there are two salvations. So this uh, brazen altar represents the ransom sacrifice of Jesus which he gave for the entire mankind. And as we come a little bit further, we have the labor there. So in the labor, there was a lot of water. This water was used as cleansing. You see, to cleanse is outward dirt after offering uh, sacrifices to God. The water that water represents. Water in the Bible represents the word of God, which actually a Christian uses to cleanse himself and become pure. So that, uh, he can see his uh, reflection and correct himself. Uh, how does a man correct himself? Uh, by taking heed to the word of God. Psalms 119. You see? Read Ephesians 5.26. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read Ephesians 5.26? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Mm, the washing of the water by the word. So, it was washing of water by the word. This is how we cleanse ourselves, isn't it? Daily, when we read the word of God, it shows our mistakes. What do we do? What should we do? We should cover it ourselves. And to take this water, this small, you see, jug that is given. So, what is that one? That is a support uh, to understand the word of God. Like these classes, you see, where we are able to understand in-depth Bible study, the clear knowledge of God, you see. So these things are necessary to cleanse ourselves. Uh, so, in James, uh, you see, Apostle James tells, uh, it is not only good that you hear the word of God, uh, you should be a good uh, practicer of the word of God. Uh, you see, James, first chapter, 22 to 25. James 1st chapter 22 to 25. Uh, imagine, brother, can you read James 1, 22 to 25? James 7, 1, 22 to 25. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. You see? So, we should not be just uh, hearers of the word of God. We should be doers of it. So, as we cross this uh, labor, you see, and we come to the holy place. So, dear brethren, in this court, who were actually uh, 
So she permitted to go inside the court. If you see, not every Israelite can go. It was only the Levis who were permitted inside the court. But uh, were the Levis allowed to go inside the holy? No. It was the priest who were only allowed to go inside the holy. What was the difference between the priest and the Levi? You see, the Levis never act sacrificed to God. They only supported. But the priest were the people who were actually sacrificed to God. Only these had access to go to the holy. What does that represent, sir? Just by being a believer in this world, that is not sufficient. We should be followers of Christ. And how do we become a follower of Christ? Just by not believing in Jesus, we need to take a further step. You see, what is the step, you know? We need to go to the holy. Now, to the, go to the holy. Can I just open the veil, like a door curtain and go? No, dear brother. The veil of the, you see, tabernacle was five inches thick, almost like a bed. You see, it was not uh, so easy to just open it and go. We need to lift it up and pass under it and go. What does this represent, sir? Jesus said, if any man wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself, carry the cross and follow me. That is the condition. We need to, you see, submit ourselves, bow ourselves, humble ourselves, leave out all the selfishness. Sir. You see, deny yourself. You see, then carry the cross, take responsibility for Christ's sake, take risk for Christ's sake. Follow the footsteps of Jesus. So this was a thing, you see, a person had to do, had to bow down, you see, and go. What did Apostle Paul say? You see, Apostle Paul said, no, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Read Romans 12, 1 and 2. Sage uh, Bhutar, can you read Romans 12, 1 and 2? Yes, sir. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This mm. is your true and proper worship. See? Do not continue. Please read, but please read. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Very good. Brother. So offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Then only you will be able to understand what God's will is. You see, dear brethren, this uh, important step, uh, you see, we have to take. Uh, then only we come inside the holy. Now, holy is a very beautiful thing to see. The entire wall of the holy was made out of pure gold and all the things were made of pure gold. You see, there was no sun rays coming inside the holy. Outside there was sun rays, but here inside nothing, only gold. The only light that came in the holy was through that candlestick. You see? And dead opposite to the candlestick was the table of the shoe bread. You see? And the golden candlestick, the light used to glow 24 hours. Just imagine the entire room is made of pure gold. If a light, uh, a light, how it will shine? It will glitter and shine brightly. That's very beautiful to see it. Uh. And the priest, whenever he came inside the holy, morning and evening, he used to trim it. Uh, he used to pour the oil. What does the oil mean in the Bible? Oil means Holy Spirit in the Bible. They used to anoint the priest, the kings. Uh, you see, the, that represents the anointing oil which God uses as uh, the Holy Spirit. So, if we need to get more Holy Spirit, we need to trim ourselves. Take out all the filth. You see, daily what we should do? We should take out all the filth from the lamp, isn't it? You see, it has to be trimmed. The black, the twigs has to be cleaned. The black things has to be removed. Then it will shine brightly. If we clean ourselves only, God will give us more Holy Spirit. Or we will give the Holy Spirit. You see, and that opposite to this one, was the table of the shoe bread. Uh, you see, the table was there and uh, it had six and six loaves. So six and six means how much? Uh, 66. Uh, that is the word of God. Hence, the Bible has only 66 books. Uh, 
you see placed uh, next to each other old testament and new testament upon this one you see there was you see um, what do you say a fish full of incense you see this was placed dead opposite to the candlestick what does it mean it is through the holy spirit that we are able to understand the bible without holy spirit we can't understand the bible at all dear brethren you see therefore uh, uh, the holy spirit uh, where god has kept us uh, it is kept inside this old vessel it will be a leaky vessel it will be keeping on going daily we need to fill it again and again and again and again you see read second corinthians 4:7 uh binod brother can you read second corinthians 4:7 Okay, sir. Uh, Second Corinthians four seven. Hmm. But we have these treasures in our own vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God, not uh, and not of us. Amen. See, we have this treasure in the earthen vessel. In this earthen vessel, God has kept this Holy Spirit, dear brethren. So it will keep on leaking, but we need to fill it up daily. Hence, Bible says, "Be you filled with the Holy Spirit." Grieve not the Holy Spirit. How do you fill it with the Holy Spirit? Not just kneel down and pray. God doesn't give the Holy Spirit just like that from heaven. We need to study the Word of God. You see, the more and more we study the Word of God, we cleanse ourselves of all the filthiness. We are filled more and more of God's Spirit. Since we can understand more and more of God's words, therefore, without Holy Spirit, the Bible can't be understood at all. The high priest used to come every day. morning and evening he should trim the lamp after trimming the lamp what is to do he is to go to the table of the shoe bread take a fist of the ta uh, you see the incense in his hand and he is to go and burn it uh, upon the incense altar and the smoke is to pass and go beyond the second veil which was a sweet smelling aroma to god now what does that represent sir uh, daily when god gives us the holy spirit we understand more and more of the word of god and we develop certain bit of character and you know how that character is tested that is tested when you are put into fire you see if we are put into fire and if our character is burning that clearly shows that our character is not built upon the solid foundation it's very burning easily but if it sustains that brings a sweet smelling aroma to god which is very very pleasing to god so daily from morning till evening we have trials no in spite of praying early in the morning we have trials morning till evening we have a lot of trials and temptations no need to worry this is all permitted by god this is the fiery trials which test us you see but if we pass we will receive the crown of life read james 1:12 uh, stephen brother can you read james 1:12 stephen brother james 1:12 Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Mm. This is the man who endured temptation when he is tried when he is tested when he passes he will receive the crown of life dear brethren so that will be pleasing to God you know if the high priest had to go you see into the most holy he had to go only once a year you see and that to after putting lot of incense that incense has to cover the most holy it seems so similarly before we go to god in heaven our life should be first of all pleasing to god year itself year itself of our life our life is not pleasing to god if that doesn't bring glory or incense to god where can we go to most holy and live with god you see and every christian thing is as soon as he dies he goes to heaven where everybody can go to heaven with such mentality yeah we need to be holy a life which is pleasing to god that is the most holy there was a shekinah glory always that is god's presence if we are going to god's presence how you see how should we be we should be in the likeness of christ 
So in the most story, there was only one item. That is the Ark of the Covenant. And the mercy seat. What is there in the Ark of the Covenant? Three things were there. You see? What does that represent? You see? First, the golden pot with manna, orange butter rod, and the law. What does these three represent? It's very simple. The manna, which was outside, that, that got corrupted. It was stayed only till one day. Next day, it got corrupted. You see, it was no use of storing the manna. So, what does this represent? Our life, which is now, it is of no use. You see, it's not a permanent life. It is not an immortal life. It gets corrupted. But the life which Jesus has promised, the life which God has promised, is immortal life. A life where there is no death at all. Read Revelation 2.17. Uh, Sahaja Buddha, can you read Revelation 2.17? Yeah, yes, brother. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. See? The hidden manna, the immortal nature, dear brethren. And there was orange butter rod. Now, what is this orange butter rod? You know, there was a grumbling that happened in the camp of Israel. Everybody grumbled how only Aaron is chosen as the priesthood. We are also chosen. So Moses told, okay, bring everybody one on the almond rod. We'll keep it in a tabernacle. Whose rod is better in the morning, we will decide that they are the chosen priesthood. So you know what happened? Everybody kept the rod, but only Aaron's was budded and it flowered and that fruit also. That was a sign of a chosen priesthood. So similarly, what are we? We are royal priesthood. First Peter 2 9. First Peter 2 9. Emmanuel brother, can you read First Peter 2 9? <laughs> First Peter 2 9. But you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's mm. special possession. That you may declare the priest of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. See, a chosen priesthood, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. So that represents the priesthood. And the third thing was the law. No. Who actually studies the law? You see, it is the lawyer, the judges. Who are expert in the law now? So the, the tablets represents that we are going to be judges. So we should be expert. Expert with us. The word of God should be within us. So the church who are going to be with Jesus, they have, they have to have these three qualifications. One, the divine nature. God is going to give them. They are going to be kings and rule with Christ for a thousand years. They are going to be the royal chosen priesthood through whom the whole world will be reconciled to God. The third one, they are going to be judges. They judge the whole world for a thousand years. Read Revelation 20, verse 6. Uh, Binod brother, can you read Revelation 20, verse 6? Okay. Um, Abhishek brother, can you read? Okay, I'll read. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. See, they should be priest of God and of Christ and they shall reign with him for a thousand years, dear brethren. So, this is the blessing which God has given to the church, dear brethren. So this, uh, upon this one, was a Shekinah glory, God's presence. Uh, it was of one piece. Uh, you see, that represents the oneness of God and Christ. Uh, you see, the four attributes of God, uh, justice, uh, power, love, wisdom, 
everything is represented in this ark of the covenant therefore dear brethren you see this is the outline the general introduction about the tabernacle you see apart from this a lot of uh, complete detailed study which god willing we may have in the future coming days also you see but before that one we say we need to prove our faithfulness to the truth is it it so my god bless these words uh, if anybody has got any doubts any questions they can ask